Rand is catching up quickly in the digital race with a myriad of tech startups. The country is grabbing eyeballs from across the border and building investor interest. Recently, Oluwatosin Ajibade, better known by his stage name Mr. Easy, a 29-year-old artist from Nigeria, acquired a homegrown fintech company. We spoke to Mr. Easy to learn about his areas of interest as he navigates Rwanda's investment climate and seeks further opportunities in various sectors. Hello there, welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. My name is Julius Bismongo. I think most African families love music uh, and I come from like a religious family so of course you know going to church, joining the church choir, joining the school choir. Um, I think that was like my earlier on um, interaction with music um, and my dad loves reggae music, you know, playing reggae music. So I'd say that was my first interaction with music and I learned to play the keyboards, but it wasn't like I was planning to be a musician. I, nowhere in my plans did I have, oh, someday I'm going to be a musician. No, I just wanted to be an entrepreneur. I just wanted economic independence. I wanted the independence that comes with being your own boss. And it just led me to, to music. So that idea of doing music, uh, of being an entrepreneur, uh, is it the same idea that you went to do music with? Because at some point, so many people do music as a passion, yeah. uh, not, not, not knowing that they can actually do it uh, yeah. and turn it into you know, a business uh, 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 empire. I mean, the main reason why I loved going to the studio was because it was the only time I wasn't thinking about money. I wasn't thinking about business. So the music, the studio was an escape to me. So I remember moving back to Nigeria in 2013, 2014 from Ghana. Um, and I got, that was my first introduction to the VC world. I got investment from a VC called 88 MPH. And then I started, you know, I started my first uh, tech startup. And I would just go to the studio to relax because of the pressures of, you know, having to answer to investors, building a business in, in, um, in Nigeria. But you know, at some point, it started to dawn on me that, hey, this, this music, I might be selling phones in this business, but here I'm selling intellectual property, I'm selling a service, I'm selling hope, I'm selling happiness, I'm selling stories, you know, and the importance of music to every one of us lives. When we're sad, when we're happy, you know, we play music. M music is always in the background. So it was the same mindset I used to make the decision. I remember f funny stories. I went to my VC. So my VC and my mentor, Chikanwobi, he had invested in my... Imagine you invest in a tech startup. You invest in an e-commerce platform. And then the founder of the platform, two years later, comes to you just when you're about to grow, you're beginning to scale. I think we had had a big deal with Airtel in Nigeria, and I go to him and I say, hey, Chica, I think people love my music. And he said, you, music? Nah, you're joking. And then I went back, you know, I came up with a, with a proposal, with a deck. I placed my music, my, the, the future music empire at $400,000 valuation, pre-money valuation. And then I went to him and said, hey, invest hundred thousand dollars post money valuation of five hundred thousand and you get twenty percent of the empire and he laughed he's like hey Tosin I don't think I don't think we want to do this you know what you've been working hard for two years so you take this two weeks or three weeks holiday I'm going to give you a ten thousand pounds loan use that loan to go try out yourself and organize the concert if you don't pay me the loan it's it converts to so a convertible loan. It converts to equity in the startup I invested in. And I will go on to successfully do the concerts, pay the loan, and you know, s switch to um, the music business. So essentially, it's the same idea I went in with. I remember reading a book by Jay-Z, Empire State of Mind. 
And that was the first time I really saw how music connects and how it connects. It gives you the access, it gives you the network, it gives you the access not only to investment, but the access to customers and consumers. And so that was the, in fact, it was that, if I say there was one single thing that made me decide to do music as a career, it was that book, Empire uh, State of Mind. And that's the same mindset I've been using and is the, essentially the same VC mindset. Every musician you see on the road, a producer, a filmmaker, is a creative entrepreneur. It's like, it's like a startup. And what the startup needs is mentorship and finance. Once you could close the mentorship and finance gap, there's no limit to, of course, not every startup would, would succeed, but at least the startup is built for you know, an option to succeed. So that's the same way I look at um, the music. That's the same mindset I look at. And of course, it's more fun than investing in some other startup. It be mad, yo, it be mad. It be mad, yo, it be mad. For the night, yo, for the night. Make it in my side, yo. Yes, we found you here in Kigali, uh, where you've probably spent quite some time, three weeks now. Yeah. Uh, some people may have a sense of probably what you're doing because of the engagements you've had. But what exactly uh, are you up to? I mean, I have a couple friends from across Africa that had been pitching Kigali, 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 Rwanda. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that, one of the driving things apart from some of my friends and uh, mentors was I'd seen an article. I think maybe one of my uh, mentors had sent to me where it said it, it was speaking about mobile money and mobile money adoption and how you know Rwanda as a country was going cashless and so it got me and my team even studying more to see the demography and to see you know policy wise where's the where's the country um, um, headed in terms of ease of doing business, how easy is it to do business. And after doing all this research, it, it, it was very glaring that, hey, Rwanda is where we want to, um, to expand to. And so in, initially, I had just one goal. You know, I had bought up a company in Rwanda. So the sale and, and just the, the ease at which the, the procurement happened, I was so impressed, you know, from, you know, speaking to the guys at getting introduction to RDB and RDB setting up the call with the necessary stakeholders, gov government and regulatory stakeholders involved. From there, quickly, maybe in less than 24 hours, we got the follow-up email. It, we, we got the sense of, you know, when you get the sense of somebody saying, hey, come and do business here, come and do business here, and it was very proactive. So that kind of encouraged me, even though the, the, the company setup was done, I think maybe company setup takes like three to six hours. Uh, the company setup was done very quickly. Uh, when I had to buy an existing company, the due diligence was done so quickly. Um, and the sale, was, the, the sale was essentially done so quickly. And I said, well, I need to go see what's going on because it, it's either you know, it, it, there's, there's something different going on, going to the fact that I've done business across the world. There's, there must be something going on here. So my plan was just to come, meet the people who I had interacted with, um, and then you, every day I keep extending, 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 you know, looking for new opportunities, you know, brainstorming with people on the ground. And I've been here three weeks. Yesterday I was almost convinced to push my flight again. I think. At this rate, I'm going to have to just run to the airport, jump in the <laughs> just like hold myself down. Mr. Easy has had a rather easy transition into the business ecosystem of Rwanda. Although he maintains businesses still face a challenge of funding. There's a huge finance gap for entrepreneurs. And I'm not just talking about creative entrepreneurs. I'm just talking about basic, young African entrepreneurs, there's not a lot of options to get funding. And so in our own small way, we've set up Zagata Capital, a collective of people with some level of liquidity, and we take small size checks, so check size from $20,000 upwards. And what we do is we um, create new LLPs case by case, and we go into 
startups and some of the startups we go into uh, secondary level startups some of the startups we go into our uh, early stage uh, startups and so within you know within our collective when we 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 see a business we're interested in then you know we we share it within the collective everybody identifies their appetite hey i want to do a 20k check size i want to do a 50k check size a 100k check size and then we're able to go into these companies we're able to go into these companies quick we're able to provide the funding quick beyond the funding we're able to invest in companies where we feel we can bring some value in terms of scalability in terms of product in terms of network and so it's been interesting we've been primarily uh, invested like i said in the online gaming sector in the fintech space um of uh uh majorly uh, in mobile money, fintech, mobile money related uh, fintech. Um, uh, we're interested in, you know, lending, we're interested in community savings, we're interested in music, we're interested in music technology, and we're just interested in cool stuff. So anything that, that's cool and we believe in, we invest in, and, you know, so far so good. We've uh, since December till date, we've raised upwards of $2 million. We've, you know, we've returned about 13% uh, to investors and, you know, it's, it's looking good. So that's essentially what I'm bringing to Rwanda on the top co, bringing, you know, coming to Rwanda and, you know, realizing, you know, I met the guys at uh, KIFC and realizing that, hey, the same things that exist in some jurisdictions in terms of regulation to promote doing business also exists here and this is actually black africa so for me it's a thing of pride to come into a country and actually see people like myself and not just in terms of the color of your skin and the age but also in terms of the mindset and you know be able to set up um the whole co structure and then invest not just in rwanda but you know, most ultimately have have my operations in KIFC as you know my holding as I go and expand more across the continent. Uh, Mr. Izzy, before we wrap up this conversation, why is it important for artists to diversify their investment beyond music industry, yeah. especially here in Africa? You could become an artist, become very popular and then convert the money and the access, the power, the cultural capital you have to businesses. Because think about it, if you started a business today, you're gonna need to reach customers. As an artist in Africa, you already have people who watch you. You have an access to at least 600 million young people who listen to you. So it makes sense for you to aggregate all of this and raise the conversation just beyond the music and start to sell services to your fans. So collaborate with experts and not just in terms of work for hire. I think African creatives have to move beyond and paying you an endorsement fee. Why will you pay me an endorsement fee so that I can reach customers? No, I don't want an endorsement fee. I want equity from work for higher to equity conversations because I'm the, I'm the bait. I'm the reason people are coming to this business. So I think generally where we are as a people in this time, I think it's important for African creative entrepreneurs who are entrepreneurs in their own right. They didn't get funding from anybody. They raised from zero to where they are now to start to expand. And beyond just the commercial reasons, I think it's also, in, it's also very important beyond the commercial reasons to be able to show the younger ones and people that come after us that there's so many upsides. Like, and in the process, you inspire people that, hey, it's my, my, my job doesn't just end on stage. My job doesn't just end um, on stage or on the radio. My job can expand. From the music industry to hospitality, Mr. Izzy's business journey seems to be round the bound as he asserts his conviction in the young nation's grand aspirations, an approach synonymous with the attitude of the youth in Africa 
whose minds seek and spoil fresh opportunities in the galaxy of offerings and exhibit the willingness to take calculated risks and carve new paths in business. For more, follow CNBC Africa on Twitter or connect with me directly at Julio underscore Abismongo.